Hello everyone and welcome to Cover 2 TV with me, Jeno, and I'm here with your daily news update. So first day in the news we have that the Jaguars QB job is apparently up for grabs and that's according to Jaguars head coach Doug Marone. Now we all know that Blake Bortles, who was drafted in 2015, is supposed to have been the Jaguars saviour. And the more we see him, the less of the saviour he looks like. The worse he's playing, he, he, he's got worse by year. He's having a bad off-season camp apparently, and he's started poorly in the pre-season. Now that means that they're looking to promote backup Chad Henney to possibly be the new Jaguars quarterback. Now the thing with Chad Henney is we've seen him as a starting quarterback before, the Miami Dolphins and the Jackson Jaguars, and both times he's done very little to stay claim that he's a real starting quarterback in the NFL. This more so is why the big this was mentioned in our discussion show this week about how we feel that the possibilities of Jaguars defence stays quite high on them and think he's one of the things he's looking forward to see. But as me and Chris just quickly pointed out, that defence can't go anywhere with Blake Bortles as their quarterback unless he fixes his own pro his problems of playing the position. Which is now shown that the Jaguars are no longer even sold as him as the franchise saviour, which is actually why Doug Manon looked like he was hired to the job to be the head coach of the Jaguars because he was apparently believed in Blake Bortles. But now what the um, things now what he's saying is the fact that actually he may not be the QB of this season and that it's an open competition between him and Chad Henney for the starting position. Again, it just strikes that bad QB play gets you killed in the league and they haven't got a QB who they believe in and it looks like it's going to be another bad season for the Jaguars with the possibility of trying to pick up one of the better quarterbacks in 2018 draft. That, that's what it's looking like for me. I can't see it going any other way. I think most people have kind of accepted that Blake Bortles isn't very good. I mean, there was video footage he made the week of Alan Robinson looking at Blake Bortles in training camp and going, keep the throw in bounds, at least give me a chance. Well, he actually just keep the throw in bounds, I'm saying give him a chance, but I actually think Alan Robinson's a brilliant. But it just shows that most of the Blake Bortles good tape was in garbage time when he was coming back from big deficits. And the actual player is the player he was for the first three quarters. Rather than being a John Elway star quarterback who maybe was a bit hit Mr. Star but always turned it on near the end of the game. So next up in our news today we've got Jay Cutler has called Devontae Parker a faster version than Alshon Jeffrey. Now, many of us believe that Alshon Jeffrey is a true number one wide receiver and that he, he's actually a very dominant player. And now Devontae Parker is probably showing sure signs that he's also that style of receiver that he can go up and get the ball and he's got a little bit more speed. This is a lot for the game the Miami Dolphins offense, which has actually looked pretty good the last couple of years. I mean, you got we, we all know what Javaris Landy's ability to catch almost everything and be a great more of a slot guy who catches a lot of receptions. Now having a true number one and Devontae Parker could really give the Dolphins offense a chance to shine. And we, just to go forward on this, Jay Cutler also looked pretty, pretty okay. Looked okay in that Miami Dolphins offense. I mean, he didn't set the world away, but he looked comfortable, which is what you want to see from a guy who's about to retire. Um, who was almost retired and come out of retirement to play for the Dolphins. Again, I, I've been quite open about this. I still think he's better than Brian Tannehill. I still think he's better than all the free agent quarterbacks that have been that were mentioned around the Dolphins. And I still think that everyone just loves to hate Jay Cutler rather than actually watching the film seeing what he is, which is an average quarterback. And I think he has more chance and more upside than Brian Tannehill. And I actually think their offense could be better this season. However, I don't actually expect them to make the playoffs because I think they got the playoffs by Hook and Crook last season. I don't think they were really a good team. He didn't actually look like they were ever going to anything in the playoffs, even if Ryan Tannehill had the starters instead of Matt Moore. I think I can't just, without doing a prediction already, I think when you look at how strong the AFC West is, and then you think the other team probably going to come from the AFC North or South, I can't see a second a wild card team coming from the AFC East. I can't see it being thrown away if the Dolphins actually make that push. But it's still encouraging if you're a Dolphins fan to have two genuine wide receivers 
and Jay Cutler looked like he's commanding the offense and that goes together as well with JJ coming back from injury. Okay, now on the next news, more quarterback news. The Bills are apparently not considering a QB change and still see Tyler Taylor as their number one court, their number one option starting quarterback. Uh, I actually don't completely buy into this because if the Bills have shown anything since Tyler Taylor's became their starting quarterback, it's that they don't believe in him. It's that they, they, they're not very high on him. I mean, last season he was looking like good time benching for EJ Manuel. I mean, apparently that was the general manager rather than the coaches who were high on Tyler Taylor. But from what I've watched, again, I, I, I think he's somewhere between the 20th and 25th quarterback. Maybe even 25th to 32nd, somewhere in that region. I don't believe the Bills are actually sold on. I think he's a placeholder till they can either one of their young new draft quarterbacks or majors, or they can get a better option than next year's draft, which is supposed to be more QB um, friendly draft with um, Sam Darnold and Josh Rowland and a couple of the other guys out there. Josh Allen. Um, so I, get, I, don't, I think that they might be saying that it's not up for grabs this season. But the way Paddy Tyler Taylor looked in that pre-season game where he threw two picks and he's having a disappointing camp, it may become an issue and I actually expect that to become a bigger issue if he continues to underwhelm in front of a franchise who's clearly not settled on Tyler Taylor as the starting franchise QB going forward. Alright, next in the news as well we've got Jim Harbour, sorry, John Harbour apparently said that he believes that Ryan Mallet is doing okay in, in pre-season training, he's quite happy with him, he thinks he's getting more, it's unjust all the criticism he's getting. Eh, I, again, this, this, it's not surprising that he's saying that, but I just disagree, I think Ryan Mallet, he's looked very average, and that's not what you want to see, I mean, well, not even average, he's looked below average, he's looked like he's not even good enough to be a backup. And that's a problem for the Ravens. They still seem sold on the fact Flacco's going to be back and they're going to be fine. But it's looking more and more a little bit cut. I'd be more and more worried about as a Ravens fan. Thinking that they're going to trot out Ryan Mallet potentially in week one. That is a scary sight. As a Patriots fan, I always had high hopes for them. But it was it come clear by the time we released them that we practically had to force Texans, the Texans to take him. They... The, um, Bill O'Brien never seemed completely sold on bringing in Ryan Mallet to the Texans, and that's why we saw Brian Hoyer start ahead of him, and then he put Ryan Mallet back on the team because he had a better arm, but then dropped my Ryan Mallet again because of other issues. And there's always seemed to be these, there was the issues of why Ryan Mallet was expected to be a first round pick and then to drop into the third round. There seems to be something mentally not there about Ryan Mallet, and I keep trying to stress this when I talk about the best quarterbacks in the league. Mental ability. It's just as important as Armstead than being able to make the throws. Okay, um, just also on today's um, new shot, I just wanted to answer a few comments that were coming on in our last video. First, we had Kev Shaw, who asked about Mitch, what we think of Mitch Stavisky, saying he believes he's going to be the next franchise quarterback for the Bears, and he's quite pleased with him. Well, Kev, I don't think any of Mitch Stavisky right now. It's pre season. It's good that if you're a Bears fan, you want to get excited by him. But until I see him in the regular season, I just don't really have an opinion. I, just, I, I don't believe in judging players on pre-season, especially quarterbacks going against like a team, a bunch of players who are probably not going to make the opposing team, are probably not going to be maybe practice squad players at best, or probably having to find something else to do with their lives. Um, so I, I just I think pre-season is far too early to judge anyone. But from what I've seen, he's looked good. But I wouldn't, I'd never stick my neck out on the line and like say, um, say he's going to be this, the franchise, the future of the Chicago Bears. Because I, I just don't think pre season to the time to say. Also, on a couple of videos, we've had Philly Edwards ask us whether we watch Hard Knocks. So you must be really wanting to know that question. And the answer is, Phil, not really. I, I've seen one episode or two previously. It's not for me, I, I just don't care. I don't care about it. It kind of focuses on players who are, uh, they might be an interesting personality, but they're probably never going to make what lies in the actually make it in the NFL. Or I just, I only care about what I see on the field. I don't really care about the players' lives off the field. I know 
there's a way for it to humanise those players and let you see and you know there's a good story this week about Roberto Aguayo getting cut and how that was shown but I just I've never I just I don't have the time I don't have the time to watch it and I, it just doesn't bug me it's not something I'd watch watch really and I don't believe the other two guys watch it either so that answers that for you Phil and then just finally our last bit of news today is our oh, Rooney second believes that Le'Veon Bell will make it to training camp this season. He was said he reckons he will show up to the Steelers and be there for week one. This is again this is what all the reports from ESPN are also agreeing with that they believe that Le'Veon Bell will end his holdout and be ready for week one with the Steelers. Obviously we all want Le'Veon Bell to play because he's possibly the best running back in the league. The only reason why I put David Johnson ahead of him is just because Le'Veon Bell's suspension and injury issues, which we haven't seen from David Johnson yet. Well, not that he might have suspension, not that he'll ever have but suspension issues, I don't know, but we, we've definitely got that red flag already on Levy and Bell. Obviously, he's currently holding because he wants a new contract, and he's looking for both running back money and wide receiver money. It's going to quite, be quite interesting how that works out. But I, in, in the owners saying that they believe that Levy and Bell will be back before pre season ends and ready for week one. It's all a good sign for all Steelers fans because a lot of them feel that they would have had a better opportunity of beating the Patriots in the AFC, in the AFC conference final if Le'Veon Bell was there and wasn't injured. Me personally, I don't think it gives them extra time. It makes that offense look scary. I mean, if you don't, if you if you're not going to cover Chad over and just let him walk into the end zone a couple of times, I still don't think you're going to beat the Patriots. But um, yeah, so Le'Veon Bell coming back is a good sign. That's all in our news today. This has been your daily news with me, Jeno. Why I'm here? Go check out our weekly discussion show where we discuss numerous topics, mainly about things we really want to see this season. So go check that out. It does include teams like the Bengals, the Texans, the Jaguars, the Cowboys, the Vikings, and the Carolina offense. Give us a big thumbs up and subscribe. Ta da!